well, maybe parents ought to be using more birth control. She thought that was funny. The telephone is ringing and singing. You got to fire Curtis. You got to suspend him. He's got to buck and bow. He's got to apologize. He's got to retract these statements. No, no, no. These are the words of Eric Adams. This was made yesterday at a meeting of the Department of Education. The acronym stands for dumbest organization ever. Amongst their elite members who are overpaid, uh, some teachers, some children. It was a packed meeting. The mayor of the city of New York said this side by side with his chancellor of the Department of Education, Banks, who was nodding his head vigorously in agreement. So I just want to review it because I know what's going to happen, Justin. You're going to say, oh, that's that's a result of AI, artificial intelligence, which some people do. There's no doubt about that. But that's about as bogus as the arguments against what we have seen of the deterioration of President Joe Biden as he shuffles along and at times freezes and is lost. The opposition has said, oh, no, 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 no. The, those those videos, those photos are photoshopped. They're altered. It's really not Joe Biden. It's it's a disgrace that his enemies would do that. You see, that's always the fallback. When you look at something and you can see it for yourself, they'll tell you that what you're looking at is altered. And they will tell you now, the Adams administration and his dwindling number of supporters in this city, that what you just heard, discovered by my wife Nancy in the wee hours in the morning, his own words, his own speech before the Department of Education, dumbest organization ever, with his own chancellor nodding in agreement next to him like a bobblehead doll, is not the result of artificial intelligence. And just to qualify it as such, I'm going to play you the longer version of what Nancy discovered when she did the deep dive of Eric Adams saying, why is it that our children have to learn European English? It is unbelievable that we believe children should only learn English in our school system. I mean, what are we thinking about? We're we have a city... But all of these different nationalities, all of these different languages, the brain development of a child would acquire in a different language at an early age better than waiting until they become an adult. And we're not leaning into that. That's the arrogance of a European mindset that the only language that is, should be known is one language, English. These babies should learn all these different languages. Arrogance of the European mindset. Over the ages, Farrakhan and other anti-Semites have used that word when they don't want to necessarily say Jews. It's like those who protest and they're out there from the river to the sea. They don't say Jews. They say Zionists. Everybody understands that means white Ashkenazi teachers who would teach you. Let's uh, get the drop on that if we can, uh, Lou. That's the arrogance of the European mindset that the only language that is, should be known is one language, English. And then I want to play a few of the other cuts because he does not want anybody to know this. I wouldn't be surprised if the Adams administration takes this video down or makes it unavailable to members of the press. Uh, room 9 at City Hall. They're trying to actually push reporters out of Room 9. But here he goes um, with his uh, playing the race card, which is what Eric Adams has always done as... A Brooklyn Borough president, as mayor, as state senator, as black-centric cop, 100 blacks in law enforcement, and before that, big supporter of Louis Farrakhan. Listen to how he describes a public educational school system. I cannot help believe that if the educational system were failing children of other ethnicities, you will see a total dismantling of the educational system. We were dispendable. Dispendable? Does he mean expendable? Uh, Lou, you need to play that again because dispendable, I mean, that's something. That would be a faux pas. That would be a spoonerism, uh, malaprops that I would normally say. But he really means expendable. Could you play that one again, Lou? Please, please. I cannot help believe that if the educational system were failing children of other ethnicities, you will see a total dismantling of the educational system. 
We were dispendable. Dispendable. Expendable, I believe he meant to say. So basically, as if this were happening to Asian and white children, there would be no tolerance for that. But it's happening to predominantly black and Hispanic children, so there's tolerance. Again, that's a form of prejudice that recently has been exerted against Asians for doing so well in the school system. Uh, Comrade Bill de Blasio tried to eliminate the specialized tests, and the Asians organized and fought back, and rightfully so. It's a meritocracy. You work hard, right? You study hard. Your parents encourage you to study. And maybe if you have, you're from a broken home or you don't have good guidance at home, uh, uh, you need substitutes to sort of guide you along the way. That can all be provided. But don't. Don't divide the races as Eric Adams always loves to do between Asians and whites on one side. You heard him very clearly, his own words, and blacks and Hispanics on the other side. And then he said something. I don't know what he meant by this. Well, maybe Lou, maybe Justin, maybe our audience can figure this out. His story is not our story. His story is not our story. What does he mean by his there was no further explanation in his diatribe before the Department of Education, dumbest organization ever. Could I hear that one more time? Because tomorrow I'm going to ask Sid. Maybe he's referring to Sid, who's become as vociferous a critic as I have become. His story is not our story. Now, apparently his might refer to a lot of people. The publication City and State has now published People who would have been on Eric Adams' haters list. And you can imagine, Justin Ellick, I'm on it. Sid Rosenberg should be uh, definitely nominated on it. And there are a whole bunch of others. There's socialists, there's Democrats mostly, but he actually keeps a haters list. People who hate him. Now, Sid, to his credit, he likes him personally. He just hates that he does nothing about these problems and pontificates, says the right things, but doesn't do anything. Oh, man. And then he told another whopper yesterday, people who were in this meeting, Department of Education, dumbest organization ever know damn well that this was my issue in the last campaign against Eric Adams. I was the sole candidate on the campaign trail that said we're not removing school safety agents from our schools that protect our babies, that we heard from them over and over again that they wanted a better relationship with their school safety agents in the police department. You know why I say never trust any politicians, Democrats or Republicans, because they believe, and I've been in the company of Democrats and Republicans who believe that you're all stupid. That, in fact, you can't remember anything that was told to you five seconds before, five minutes before, five days, five weeks, five months, five years before. They truly believe that. Democrats and Republicans, that they are your sheep herders and your sheep. First off, if you go back to the general election, which I lost Eric Adams fair and square, I was constantly at rallies advocating the hiring of more school authority agents who are under the jurisdiction of the NYPD. They wear almost a quasi-police uniform, although they don't have police powers. I was constantly saying that. Justin Ellick, why don't you do a quick Google check and look at how Eric Adams actually took money out of the budget to let go, to lay off school security agents, and then because of the tremendous blowback he got from parents and the UFT and other educators, he put some of it back, not all of it back. Could I hear that one more time, Lou, about how he was the only candidate? I was the sole candidate on the campaign trail that said we're not removing school safety agents from our schools that protect our babies, that we heard from them over and over again that they wanted a better relationship with their school safety agents in the police department. By the way, why does this guy always refer to children as babies, if you notice? They could be in high school, they're your babies. They could be in junior high school, they're your babies. They can be in elementary school, they're your babies. I've got three sons who've been educated in public school. They're not babies. They're not babies. They're young adults. And they need security. They need additional security. 
Now, here we have a huge Abed piece. Michael Bloomberg, the former mayor who served eight years and then bribed his way to serve another four years. The proponent of term limits decided term limits for all of you, but not for me. I'm going to bribe my way into an additional four years. And he did. And for the most part, he had a stable mayoralty of 12 years following on the eight great years of Rudy Giuliani. A lot of it, you got to give credit to Ray Kelly. Ray Kelly was at the helm for 12 years. And to his credit, Michael Bloomberg did not interfere with police operations because Michael Bloomberg admitted he's not a street guy. He knows nothing about the streets other than Wall Street, where he's become a billionaire many times over. But there was that moment, moment in his administration, I remember, he was at one of his many cocktail parties with the rich and famous, you know, the Robin Leach would portray lifetimes of the rich and famous. And he looked across the room to a publisher of magazines, which nobody reads anymore. You know, you can go online. Very few people get the hard copy. Her name, you may have remembered, was Kathy Black. She had no educational experience whatsoever. None. And he said, how would you like to be chancellor of the new Department of Education? In charge of 1.1 million students with 1,600 public schools. And the reason he chose her, you know what the reason was, Justin Ellie? Because Oprah loved her. So if Oprah Winfrey loved Kathy Black, that would make her a candidate to be the chancellor of the Department of Education. And let me tell you what a disaster it was. And it was doomed to failure. She went to Brooklyn Tech. They were having an evening meeting of parents. And there were all kinds of problems because there's not enough space in the schools at the time. It was overcrowding. So she's the brand new chancellor. It's 2011. I'll never forget it. She gets on the stage. They have the biggest school in the United States, Brooklyn Tech. The biggest. In fact, John Katsimatidis is a proud alumni. Anthony Weiner. We can go right down a laundry list of all those who've graduated from Brooklyn Tech over the years. By the way, probably one of the first high schools, especially high schools, that was totally integrated. Blacks, Hispanics, whites, Asians. Now it's mostly Asians because, again, it's a meritocracy. They're doing the best. But I will tell you this. It was an absolute disaster. She comes out on the stage. And you know what her answer to overcrowding was, Justin Ellick? She's saying, well, maybe parents ought to be using more birth control. She thought that was funny. Uh, didn't go over well with that audience. She got booed on the stage. And then later on at another gathering, because the parents wanted to see who is this new woman in charge of the biggest public school system in the United States, appointed by Michael Bloomberg, Kathy Black, who uh, replaced Joe Klein. And again, she was asked about the lack of classroom space, and she said, you know, making decisions about satisfying the need for classroom space is like making many Sophie's choices. Oh, my God, Sophie's choices. I hope they let the kids read this book in school, you know, because they want to remove all uh, literature that's been written by white people. But that was the mother who was forced to choose which of her children would be killed in the concentration camp of Auschwitz. I mean, come on, how dense. This woman soon had to uh, resign. It was a dismal failure, but I do like the op-ed piece that former billionaire Mayor Michael Bloomberg wrote about the need to take cell phones away from the kids in schools. I can't tell you how many arguments I've had, mostly with mothers. Mothers and sisters, oh, I need to know where my child is at all times. I need to, I need to be able to track them. I got it. Uh, you know, if there's ever a 9-11 again, I, I need to be able to call my child. And they say, you know, when my child... By the way, the towers had toppled World Trade Center 1 and 2, and there was no cell phone communication. So that's bogus. Cell phone communication was down for days in many instances. And so children are able to take their cell phones into the class... And let me tell you something. There are cyber bullying going on like you can't believe, man. Kids are looking across that classroom and they're picking on that kid and they're bullying him on the phones. They're bullying him. They're flash mobbing kids outside, beating them up. They need to do what Bloomberg did. That's the one good thing he did with the Department of Education. You had to check your phone in 
before you clash. In fact, there were many entrepreneurs who would keep a wagon outside. You know, they would normally sell burritos. No, they would house your cell phone for like a dollar. You give them your cell phone, they would put it in a little compartment, and you get it back at the end of the day. It was good for the business. It was good for the students. It was good for everyone concerned. And then all of a sudden, who changed that comrade? Bill de Blasio, the part-time mayor, the dope from Park Slope, him and his crooked wife, who destroyed what was a working system. And now let's hope, because Bloomberg has mentored Eric Adams and Chancellor Banks. He's mentored them. Hopefully... They will see the handwriting is on the wall that if you want to get control of the schools because they're out of control uh, and you're not going to hire more school safety agents, which Eric Adams and Chancellor Banks are not going to do, even though they have a thirty six billion dollar budget, one third of the bloated city budget of one hundred and eight billion dollars, thirty six billion. You think you think as taxpayers, we're getting our money's worth. You think families are getting their money's worth. You think the children are getting their money's worth. Absolutely not. But let's hope that Bloomberg says, hey, guys, this administration is turning into a complete disaster. I supported you, Eric Adams. I supported you, Chancellor Banks. I got my wealthy friends to bankroll you. How about, let's go old school, when I was in charge of the city and I enforced the ban on cell phones in the public school system, in elementary schools, junior high schools, and high schools. That would be the right thing to do. And I know there are a lot of mamas out there, oh, I need to stay in touch with my... We never had any phones when we were kids. We would walk outside and we wouldn't come back until it was dark at. They had no way of tracking us. I'm not suggesting that's the way it should be when your kids are outdoors and they're not in school. But when they're in school, they're safe and secure. They don't need to be Mama Luke's calling Mama every five seconds. They get their phone at the end of the school day and then they got their phone the rest of the day. And then, Mamas, you can track them because you have the global positioning system. That will track them no matter where they go so that if they call you and they're not where they claim they are, you'll know they're at the Queens Mall or they're at the the Arby Square Mall. They're somewhere they shouldn't be. They're lying to you and you can deal with them when they get home. But let's, let's actually go back to the Bloomberg way of removing cell phones from the children and the young adults who go to our public school systems. I don't often have much, many nice things to say about Michael Bloomberg. Arrogant. I mean, oh man, so pretentious, omnipotent. But on this one, he was absolutely right. It's time to go back and take this, those cell phones away from the kids before the school day and give them back at the end of the school day. It's your guardian angel. Curtis Lee, we're here reminding you to click that subscribe button and hit the bell icon so that you never miss a beat of the action here at 77 WABC Radio. Thanks for joining us. And until next time on The Rip and Read, stay safe and stay informed.